Hi there, everyone. So this is a different kind of video I'm doing this week. Um, I just rebuilt my pedal board because I'm working on a recording project pretty soon, and this is built for that. Um, so I was going to give you a big guitar pedal nerd video this week where I talk about the board. I talk about why I set it up the way I did, uh, what the pedals do, and basically why they're in the order they're in. So I'm just going to be sitting back, drinking tea, and talking about one of my favorite things in the world. As far as how long this build will last, uh, I'm assuming I'll keep it this way for at least a month. I tend to redo this board every one to two months. So I feel like this setup's pretty stable for a while. I'm pretty happy with it. I've been playing with it for a couple days, and I like what I'm getting out of it. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's dive in. So I'm going to go a little bit out of order to start here. Um, the Strymon Iridium is here. It is near the end of my chain, and it is always, always turned on because it is basically my amp sim and my cab sim. Uh, I'm running it in the Fender mode right now, and I'll just be keeping it there for the purposes of this video. And I'm playing a Fender... Telecaster. So here's the clean tone that you're getting without any pedals on except for the Iridium. Okay, so starting at the beginning of the pedal board, uh, my first pedal is and pretty much always will be the Digitech Freakout. So this pedal basically replicates the sound of cranking your amp, throwing some you know distortion on it, standing in front of it, and getting that just searing feedback sound. Um, when you're a home musician and you don't want to crank your amplifier and drive everyone nuts, this thing is indispensable. Now, I actually find I use this all the time but I don't leave it turned on all the time. I'll kind of, you know, bash it on at certain moments when it works and it's appropriate. But so I'm just going to turn it on right now just so you can hear what it does, right? So this is my tone or my guitar without the freak out. <laughs> I have a little delay on there too. And here is the freak out. So you get the drift. That's what that does. Um, I, I use this thing all, all the time. It never leaves my pedal board, to be honest, and I doubt it ever will. Even if I could get amp feedback, I would still keep this on my board just because it's so cool to be able to kind of add that to your sound at certain moments when when you want to. And I'm really actually curious what it would sound like on a bass. I've never plugged a bass into it, but I'm literally thinking about that right now. And I wonder if it would do anything or if it just sound like utter shit. So maybe one day I'll try that. All right, so my chain leaves the freak out and then I go into my tuner pedal you know what that is. Uh, from the tuner pedal, I go into the Walrus Audio Deep Six. Uh, this is a compression pedal, and the compressor has a blend knob. Um, that's very, very important to me because I don't want that compression sound to overwhelm the sound of my guitar. I want it to sound natural, and, you know, I just kind of use this as almost like a light overdrive. So, you know... Basically, I put it on if I'm doing very, very clean parts. You know, I just have it set to kind of not really add a lot of sustain and kind of just round off those transients. So that's the Deep Six. One last thing I wanted to mention about the Deep Six is its placement. So I use, I, normally I have this after my gain pedals, but this time I moved it before my gain pedals. Um, and I'm not really sure why I did that. I think when I initially put in, I was thinking, well, I sometimes want a very compressed, uh, you know, early effects section to go into my gain pedals. All right, so next we leave the deep six and we go into the sub and up. And the sub and up is basically, it's an octave pedal. It's basically like a pog, but with a smaller footprint. Um, it doesn't have as many features as the big pog, but it's also, 
nice and small, and I like that because, as you can see, I'm running out of room on this board. So there's kind of two ways I use it. Um, one is, a, is in its normal poly mode. <laughs> And I really love how well it tracks. You know, it just, it's its pretty responsive to how you pick. There's not a lot of lag in there. Um, there's this other setting that I have that you know, kind of sounds like a cheesy organ. I'll sometimes use that. Honestly, I don't use this pedal as often as I probably should. You know, I'll put it on at times to kind of give a, uh, you know, a guitar part a little more depth, but, you know, I use it rather sparingly. I do have it this early in the chain because obviously when I kick this in, I want all these other pedals to, you know, be affected by it. So that's the sub and up. So next in the chain is the Procession Reverb by Old Blood Noise Endeavors. Um, it's very early in the chain because uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I want some reverb sometimes going into gain and I want sometimes a lot of reverb going into that. <laughs> As you can tell, that's incredibly, incredibly over the top. Um, but sometimes that's called for. Sometimes I want this big, like, angry, distorted wash under under um, other things. And that'll make that. So that's one reason I have this bad boy here. The other reason is it is a freeze pedal. So it has all these... There's this pedal, and then there's also the Dark Star. They both can do this this thing where they can freeze a note, right? So let me show you. Okay, so I have just frozen that note in this pedal. So now that means that everything after it can start manipulating that note. So you get the drift. It just allows me this um, ability to freeze notes uh, afterwards. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful pedal. And I do have to say that I want to get a Dark Star because um, I feel like sometimes I want that instead of this one, and then I would probably just swap them out in this place on the pedal board. So after the procession, then we go into my gain pedal section. And I have two pedals in there right now that are overdrives. Uh, the first one is the King of Tone. So I wanted to talk about this pedal a little bit. Um, the, first of all, why did I pick this pedal? I Because I think picking an overdrive pedal is literally the most difficult thing to do as a guitarist as far as choosing pedals. Because there's so many overdrive pedals and every single one of them has 80 YouTuber guitarists praising how amazing it is. And you know, all of, I mean, nowadays, like all pedals seem to sound pretty darn good. So it's hard to pick one, right? It's just like too many options. Um, so why did I pick this one? Well, I decided that I wanted to sit on a waiting list for a year and a half until I could get it. Um, so that's how long it took to get. It's the V4 of the pedal. And the reason I chose this overdrive was because I was watching uh, this other YouTube channel called That Pedal Show, um, and the guys on there were praising how amazing this pedal sounds. So I took a chance and ordered it, and lo and behold, they were absolutely right about it. Um, it is the most wonderful overdrive pedal I've ever played. It just has this kind of clear tone to it. It makes everything sound great better. If you stick it in front of an amp, it makes the amp sound better. It just doesn't seem to ever sound bad. So um, I have the a distortion side on the red, 
And on the yellow side, I have an overdrive right now. But you can put a boost in there and you can, you know, configure it with dip switches and that kind of shit. Um, I do want to say that the, you know, the channel that pedal show really helped me with a lot of things on this board because they just give so much great information. So I'm really grateful to them. If you want to look at a great YouTube channel for guitar pedal stuff, check them out there. It's called That Pedal Show, and they're really, really great over there. Um, anyway, the yellow side, I pretty much leave this on 90% of the time. <laughs> It just sounds beautiful. It just sounds expressive and it's clean, but it's also got a little bit of grit to it. It's really responsive when you dig in. It's just amazing. Uh, the over the distortion part of it is actually really, it's like super compressed and super dark. Um, even with the tone kind of cranked, you know, more in the high side on here, it's still kind of a dark distortion. You know, but I really like it. Like, it's not it's not going to work for your metal rig, I don't think, but it's definitely going to work if you want this kind of good, like, distorted rhythm sound. And so the best thing about it is it stacks nicely with other pedals, right? So often I will stack these, and then I'll even stack them into the next pedal, which is the Fuck Overdrive by Small Sound Big Sound. It's a great pedal in that it has such a wide range of sounds to it right so it can sound like a very light mild overdrive and then it can sound like a big angry fuzz pedal so right now i have it kind of dialed in pretty heavy <laughs> I mean, it's just a real kind of aggressive pedal. And it has this feature that kind of gives you this blown speaker effect. Sorry, let me turn that on. I'm not pushing that one. Do it. So just real gritty and gnarly, and I love it for that. So after the fuck overdrive, I go into the Electro Harmonics Super Ego Plus. Uh, this is a very, very cool pedal. I'm always on a quest to find a pedal that will replicate an Ebo, and this pedal does that. The main thing it does is it has this freeze function but then it will allow you to play other notes and it will kind of transform and do this uh, glissando effect into other notes. I'm not sure if I said glissando correctly at all. So if I screwed that up, please forgive me. So you can hear it kind of takes when you play and it kind of holds the note and freezes it for an amount that you can kind of determine. It definitely sounds better, you know, when you throw some, let me reach that, uh, delay and reverb on there. Now, the Super Ego does have these onboard effects, um, everything from detune to delay, pitch shifting, uh, tremolo, all kinds of stuff on here, right? And you can toggle those on and off. Now, I don't use them very often, but one thing I do use is the filter. And this is a trick that uh, was passed along by another YouTuber named Andy Othling. And Andy Othling is this insanely talented guitarist who plays this very beautiful ambient music, and he shares a lot of great information on his channel. So if you have not checked him out, you really, really should. But basically, when you have the filter set a certain way, you can kind of dial out some of those harsh uh, tones on this pedal. So that's it without the filter.
Yeah. And then just when you feed that thing into delay and, and some reverb, it just sounds absolutely beautiful. So Super Ego, really, really great pedal. Okay, so next, the modulation section. So we go from the Super Ego into my single modulation pedal, which is the Visitor. Uh, right lately, I've been using this as a chorus pedal primarily. And I have it actually, you know, I this pedal will do these insanely extreme things. But I actually find I really like it as just kind of a mild chorus right now. So, you know, I'm not using it for all it can do, but... I like how it sounds, you know, so. And sometimes I will swap this pedal out for the flat light pedal, which is a flanger. So it just kind of depends on what mood I'm in. But, you know, it's been here a while, and I like the fact it can do several modulations in one pedal. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so after the visitor pedal, I go to the count to five. Um, you know what this is. It's a delay slash crazy sampler looper pedal. I already recorded a loop into it, so you wouldn't have to see me pick up my foot and hold down the button while I uh, record that. Um, you know, I do really, really like this pedal, especially when you dump it into a bunch of delay and reverb. It's just like a sandbox experimental pedal, so this is kind of my weird section of the board, which kind of generates sounds and, you know, lets me play with them and manipulate them later. So after the count to five, then we go into my newest pedal, which is the Chase Bliss Mood. I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't know what I'm doing with this pedal yet. Um, I haven't had it long enough, and I haven't sat down and really tried to pick it apart. It's kind of like the Count to Five, but it isn't anything like the Count to Five. And it just has... Again, I'm not going to dive into it too much right now because I wouldn't be telling you anything that would be useful because I don't know what I'm doing with it. But one thing I do like about it... is it's always listening to you. So it because of that, you can just kind of hit the button at any time to play back what it's listening to. And you're just not sure what you're going to get. So I don't know, it's a very it's a very experimental pedal and I I really really like that. And this is just a very, you know, random setting I picked to screw around with it. I'm still learning my way around this pedal, and I'm looking forward to getting really good at it. But I have to say, just the sounds you get out of it from, you know, experimenting are really exciting because they're so weird and crazy and cool. So it's just, I don't know. I wish I'd bought it a while ago because I feel like I'm behind the curve on knowing how this pedal works. So very cool. So after the mood pedal, I go into the El Capistan delay. This delay I use all the time. It just sounds so beautiful, um, but I also use this pedal as a looper here. So because it's in this position on the board, any of the other crazy stuff I do over here, I can put into it, loop it, warp it, and garble it up and spit it out. So that's why that is there. So next is the Condor pedal by Chase Bliss. Now this is basically an EQ pedal, which sounds really, really boring, but this pedal is not boring at all. Uh, there's two things I use it for. One is for a late chain overdrive. <laughs> Before I got this pedal, I had no idea that I would use or like that function, but it turns out I like it quite a bit and I use it quite a bit. So it's pretty cool to just have this instant 
distorted boost going on at the end of your chain. Um, the other thing it does is a lot of tone sculpting. And I find that really useful for when you're looping because you can start uh, boosting and cutting frequencies. And I find if you do that as you're looping, the looped parts will, you know, kind of sit on top of each other a little nicer. So often when I'm looping, now that I have this pedal, I'll kind of roll that low pass filter to different spots and then play the next loop and then adjust a little bit again, do it again. And I just feel like it makes everything sit with each other a little, a little better. So that's what I use it for. Um, it's a pedal I haven't had that long, so I'm sure there's some uses for it I haven't figured out. Also, I don't know if I have it in the right spot because I have a bunch of stuff after it and maybe it should go, you know, later in the chain. I don't know. But for now it's here and I like it here and we're just going to let it be there until it, uh, it bores me and I move him somewhere else. Next, we move up to the Earthquaker Devices Avalanche Run, uh, the much revered delay reverb pedal. And, you know, there's a reason everyone loves this pedal. It just sounds so beautiful. It's just such a crystal clear sound. So I have it here in the chain. Um, you know, I sometimes like to have this going along with the El Capistan because I find the dark of tone of this delay with the very bright, uh, tinkly tone of this delay. I don't know. It just, they kind of seem to sit well together to me, you know? And I mean, with these pedals here, I sometimes don't even use my, you know, end of the chain delay and reverb, which I'm getting to next. Um, so it just gives me a lot of options for kind of creating different tones. So after the Avalanche run, I go into the Iridium pedal. And after the Iridium, I normally go stereo out. Now, I'm not going stereo out right now because my interface only has two inputs and... I'm using a microphone, so I had to pull one of them, but normally you'd see more cables coming out of these guys. Now, one reason I have these two pedals after the Iridium, um, and this is mainly the big sky that does this. I find if I am playing these big reverbs out of it, on some patches, it'll get a little distorted some, you know, it almost sounds like it's starting to clip internally. I find if I have this after the Iridium, that problem is mitigated somewhat. So I th there must be a headroom issue going around or something. I don't know, but I just find that this sounds better after the Iridium. And that just seems like it makes sense to put the timeline next to the big sky. So it goes Iridium, timeline, big sky, interface. And that's how the whole chain goes. So going out of the Iridium, obviously we go to the timeline. Look at that, still got the old tagger on it. Never even played it. Um, this is often my main delay, but sometimes not, because as you can see, I have 400 delays on my board and it just kind of depends what I'm doing, what I want to do. Um, the tap tempo is a little hard to reach on this part of the board, but often I kind of you know pre-program the patches on this, so I'm not necessarily tapping in a tempo. I normally have that kind of figured out beforehand. Um, and I will at times use a little uh, MIDI controller to switch the patches and edit them in there. So it's kind of good to have these up there where the MIDI cables can get in and not get in the way of things. And finally, my last pedal in the chain, the uh, Big Sky. So obviously that's the last pedal in the chain because I want the reverb to be affected by everything I do before it. And man, these two pedals, they just sound so nice together. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just this board is so great. I'm so happy with it. So that's it. That's the board. What else can I tell you about this? Um, it's a pedal train PT Pro. It's I've had it for I guess five or six years. Very durable. Um, in all fairness, it's not like I take it out touring all over the country or anything, but you know, it has been very rock solid and, um, I don't know. It's just, I'd get another one if something happened to it, uh, powering the board. I have a couple of power supplies in here. I have a four by four voodoo lab pedal power, and I have a Mondo here. One thing I do want to mention about those is when I bought this board, I told myself, you know you're going to have a thousand pedals on here and you know you're already exhibiting signs of pedal addiction. So get a shit ton of power so you never have to worry about it. And I thought by putting those two in here that I would be set for life. Well, guess what? I was wrong. Why? Because of these darn 400 milliamp pedals. So, you know, the Strymon pedals, the Avalanche run, basically anytime you see a power cable here with a little white strip on it, that means that that pedal requires more than 100 milliamps. So with all the power ports in those power supplies under there, there's only a certain number that send 400 milliamps. And so because all these pedals I keep buying require more than 100 I'm running out of power, which is not the thing I wanted to happen, and I thought I'd future-proof this, but I did not. So that bit me in the ass, and at one point, I will have to put like a Strymon Zoya in here or something, because, you know, uh, even now, like the Big Sky, I have to have an external uh, power supply going to it because I just don't have any more of the 400 milliamp slots. So that kind of sucks. Uh, if you're building a new pedal board, you might want to think about that, that you may become like me and suddenly have a bunch of pedals that require, you know, higher pedal, higher power output, and then you will be screwed if you get the wrong power supplies. I do want to say, however, I've had these Voodoo Lab power supplies for years and years, and man, they are rock, rock solid. Zero, zero problems very quiet, no noise problem. So I can't, I can't praise them enough. I just wish I had more 400 milliamp outputs on them. And what else? Uh, the cables I'm using, I use a mixture of George L's and I'm also, I've been starting to buy the, uh, by the way, the George L's, uh, very, very good. I've read of people having problems with them, you know, with like, Oh, it doesn't, it goes out. And I, you know, sometimes goes out on me. I've never had them go out. They've been rock, rock solid. Um, the EBS cables here, these are new. I've been buying these lately because they're just so low profile. It's so nice. And there are times when really that low profile cable allows you to fit in just one more pedal. So, you know, eventually I will probably have all of these, but the George L's are great too. So those are the two brands of patch cables I use. All right, everyone, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please let me know if you like the video. I'm actually trying to get a little better at just speaking on these videos. It's funny. I'm I'm actually one of those people that I can get up on a stage in front of a crowd of a thousand people. I literally have zero fear and I can just talk and say anything. But when I'm in front of a microphone doing these videos, I find myself getting a little tongue tied at times. So I'm trying to practice that. So maybe this video is good for that. I don't know, but let me know what you think. And, um, next week I'll probably be doing more of a music oriented thing. So until then, please stay safe and thank you very much for watching.